We got our first look at Team USA Open at Windmill Windup, where the Stars and Bars went on to win the tournament with a perfect record. The finals was a bit of a weather disaster, but the US did face some closer contests in the earlier stages of the tournament. We're going to break down one superpower of the US O-line and D-line that contributed to their dominance in Amsterdam. The Mooncatchers and Clapham opponents featured here are slightly underpowered versions of the Belgian and British Open teams that will be competing at WUC next week. We'll see what countermeasures these teams can make as they try and take down the favorites. Let's start with the offense. Given the O-line personnel, it's no surprise to see the US attacks from the handlers in the front of the stack to be extremely effective and reminiscent of the recent truck stop systems. Adding speedsters like Katra and Yunks to the mix only gives the system more resources and depth. I want to specifically key in on the interplay of effective breakthroughs and handler cuts. To illustrate, let's use the extreme outside end blades that Rowan McDonald has evolved from a trick shot into a viable, repeatable threat. The value of breaking the mark is simple. You're moving the disc in opposition to where the defense wants and into a space that downfield defenders are not set up well to protect. The typical way of breaking a mark to the inside lane is to have an inside out or IO shape, flexing away from the defender initially and ending its flight towards the receiver. Against a forehand force and at short ranges, this throw can be particularly challenging due to a combination of fronting defenders, narrow spaces that require a very steep inside edge, and challenging touch for the speed of a forehand release. The blade circumvents all these problems of the IO break, exchanging the float and space advantage of the IO shape for a fast and precise throw. Rowan is able to put the disc right in the shadow of the mark from a high release point at lightning speed with a shape that is always moving away from the defender. The consequence of this throw for the defense is twofold. First, the marks are at a loss. Take this assist as an example. If the mark were to set his body and arms at the necessary height and line to challenge this throw, they would be very susceptible to the more conventional inside and around breaks. The secondary effect of this break throwing arsenal is an increased strain on the break side for the defensive players downfield. Because of the potential of these lightning fast inside throws, the defenders are forced to respect the US jab steps to the break side. Consequently, U.S. cutters were constantly able to catch the disc on cuts to the force side. While it may look like bad defense to be conceding force side unders, I'd suggest it's a byproduct of the U.S.'s break marking threat. Out of caution for summer leagues and pickup games everywhere, I should note that the blade isn't without its disadvantages, and before you start trying to replicate this, consider the increased need for accuracy as well as the less conventional catch for the receiver. Let's move over to the other side of the disc. The most obvious success of the USD line was their reset defense, as illustrated by plenty of examples of high stall situations that force the opposing offense into either a turnover or a risky, unproductive throw. The US excelled in this space due to advanced coordination between the mark and the reset defenders, particularly in sideline situations. Let's start with this example against the Clapham horizontal stack. As the disc arrives to the sideline, the mark sort of flashes to stop the around. But as soon as Mikhail pivots to the backfield and backhand throw, the mark shuffles in. With the thrower's attention towards the backfield, the mark is recognizing that the break priority to stop is the inside backhand lane, not the around forehand. By taking responsibility for the inside on the mark, the handler defenders can then play more aggressively in the space even with the thrower. Gusho, Hannes, and Kearns create a bracket around the first reset. Kearns aggressively mirrors in front, and Gusho Hannes can spy any wide around throws to space. As Gusho Hannes sees the first reset clear, he settles into his one-on-one -on -one matchup and shuts it down. There really isn't a ton of space for the secondary reset to move into now that the prior reset is stuck in the backfield. Clapham does complete a negative reset and then centers the disc, but look at what it costs them in progress. In order to center the disc and get it off the sideline, the US made the offense retreat to the end zone. This is like getting a second pull in the possession. Same possession here from the other sideline. The mark is prioritizing the inside lane, allowing the reset defender to play aggressively on the backfield cut. Even though the reset gets a little separation, the mark is making it a tight window. Clapham are forced to make a throw the full width of the field for zero yards gained on a disc that needs to be walked back into play. This is a win for the defense. Again, the mark sets flat on the inside shoulder, Warner aggressively protects the backfield space, and McHale's upline is nullified into a clear. 
Kern sells out into the backfield to do the same and even poaches off into that area, recognizing the rising stall count and other converging cutters. I think if Kearns and Shampoo are able to communicate this switch, this could very well have been a turnover. One last example in a more standard trap marking scenario. Mooncatchers run the Dominator set, basically challenging the US to three on three. They're able to get a breakthrough on an upline, but the US defense is able to immediately regain control of the situation. The mark flashes flat to stop the continuation down the line for the striking handler. While the mark is flattened out, the reset defender takes responsibility for the no longer marked around space, forcing the handler to make an extra cut. By the time the reset does free up into the around space, the mark is now recovered to deter the throw. The handler has now pivoted three times and the cutters have each made three cuts, all to get no clean space and the disc hits the grass. Check out these teams in action at WUC, August 31st through September 7th, to see what adjustments they make as they vie for gold.